Hey guys, what's going on? So we are here at uh, Charlotte Hall Museum. It's, it is an interactive frontier museum here in Prescott, Arizona. It's like the perfect day for it because it is not that hot. It is a really cool place and some funny names for things. Let me check this out. Fort Misery. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna name? Oh, we're gonna call it Fort Misery. Yeah. I think this one probably functions better than that one, though. That really, yeah. Fort Misery. No, I'm gonna hang on to it. No, I'm gonna hang on to this little dude. I'm sorry. You can have it later. Devin, you a Devin. drink? No. Need a drink? Sorry, you have to take it. Dev, we can play with it later. Come on. Come on, dude. You want that? Okay. Yeah, because they probably had three or four cots. Yeah, I wish it could be short. I guess everybody went outside and got to bend it. Do you? No, Pepe does. They had to be in all these clothes. I know, you think it would have been. Good try. Less clothes. Yeah, exactly. Let's look at the fish. The fish? <laughs> Beautiful pond area. Fishies. Little water skimmers. You see the fish in there? Are they bolt fish? They're koi fish, pop pop. But they're bold. <laughs> All right, so as the history teacher, now we have to go into the schoolhouse. Thankfully, the doorway is high enough, I don't have to bend over. <laughs> It was a sacrifice for parents to send children to school. They had to pay the teacher's salary. And if they had no money, they would pay the new campaigns that had gone home for all that stuff. Books had to be paid for. Although there were people with guppy readers. Capture the guppy readers. Let's begin. Paper wasn't expensive back then. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So now we'll take a look here at the print shop. So over here, they've got the little letters and numbers that they would put the ink on. In fact, there's a little, yeah, the little mallet thing that they would put the ink on. Yeah, I was gonna say the stamper. Yeah. Or the inker. 1868. It's been around a while. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look here at the print shop. Over here, yeah, looks like they've got the numbers and letters that they would put into the, the forms to create whatever flyers or money or whatever they wanted to, to make. And then there's the little stampers there that they would fill with, put Fill with ink and touch the or wipe it on the letters and numbers. Then they would come over here and right where this plate is, they put down the newspaper if that was to be whatever to be the the uh, item for the day. And then they would bring this, or they would they actually they would slide this part this part over underneath there put it underneath there, grab that, and pull it to the side, uh, imprinting the ink onto the paper. And then there you would have it, your very own printed paper. Can you imagine having to, all the words and stuff that are on the paper, having to go through the letters, find them, and then not only find them, but put them on backwards. Because if you didn't put them on backwards, it wouldn't print right. So that would make it very difficult. Here's more on this side. It's pretty cool. Oh, more of the there, oh, where's the shadow? There you go. Kind of hard to see, but right in there you can see the, more of the letters and numbers. All right, so now we're gonna go in the Charlotte M. Hall building. This must be where a lot more of like the other exhibits are. The ruins. Remember talking about yesterday when we went? Oh, oh no, that Walden is north of here. Oh, it's north of here. Yeah, okay. that's of course, Sedona, halfway between Sedona and Jesus. Oh, wow. Pectograph. Oh, they're pictured books. What? That's cool. They wore a sheet yeah. down here. Oh, Sam? And the, the person right here. I'm guessing this is the son of the uh -huh. That's really cool. Hi, folks. Ah. Oh, territorial map. Sorry. Well, let me tell you exactly where you are. You're in the little museum inside the big museum. To put that in perspective, when Charlotte Hall started everything, it started in the cabin next door, and it was known as the Mansion Museum. Today, it's known as Charlotte Hall's Museum. And uh, what happened over time, since 1928, is her collection grew to a point that she had this building built. And what this building represents is the actual museum inside the museum about the city of Prescott itself. So here's how it starts. You guys are all standing in the right place. It all starts on that wall with discovery of gold in this area. And then gold, silver, and copper were mined here. These people were assaulted by Indian tribes and marauders. So the government sent in the army to protect them. The army brings families Families start cities. 
So that's how you view this. Okay. This one. And if you want to know about those Indians, good and bad, you go through that portal and you will get a little bit of history about the Yavapai people. By the way, Pai means people, so it's Yavapai people. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Now, with that, I know about 24 other stories in here. Okay. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, I may be able to answer. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So, this is pretty interesting here. Um, they were talking, so this is a little Native American section in the museum. Talk about the Yavapai people who live here in the area. And came across this basket and I said, I thought, what the heck? Here's little swastikas on the basket. But there's a little plaque that says here, and it says, the symbols you see on this basket is commonly known as whirling logs among many cultures and has been used in blankets, pottery, and baskets. The meaning of this prehistoric symbol has been lost and is open to interpretation. Although this symbol is counterclockwise versus the clockwise symbol, uh, the Nazi party, all Native American tribes ceased using it during the end, shortly after World War II. So it's interesting just how you can have two, basically the same symbol, that means completely different things. Okay, so we are now in the governor's mansion for the territory of Arizona. This would be the governor's bedroom. And what looks to be the pantry. Maybe the kitchen. This was probably the living room where they would entertain and meet with maybe the cabin or something. So this was this is the dining room here, of course. I mean, that's pretty. A water pitcher. That is cool. Yeah, we're gonna open the 
is straight through, so you really retain the. Mm -hmm. And I forgot. Yeah. Exactly. It's pretty easy. They have the shadows somewhere. Help the So we just came out of the Charlotte Hall Museum and that was fantastic. Such a cool place to go. I would highly recommend it on a trip out here to Prescott. Or even if you went up to like Sedona or something, definitely come down here to Prescott. There's so much cool stuff to see. So now we are just wandering, meandering, gonna get some lunch. Might go to a place called the Palace, where uh, Wyatt Earp went and ate several times. So, we'll go from there. This place sounds good. The Bank of America. Oh, we, we can get our greens. Yeah. Do it. Absolutely. I mean, and, and the, the coins will have the minerals that we need. So that's. I think we should go to Bank of America for lunch. Exactly. Greenery? Exactly. But it might be kind of a dry salad. I don't think they have any uh, dressings. Grandma's Bakery.
Hey, Emmy, come here for a second. Come here. Like I told, like I told Grammy, I'm a real fan of those of those hats. I thought it was funny. Grammy thought it was kind of funny too. Even though it's the second time I heard it. It is. <laughs> that wouldn't be creepy at night. Okay, so we are now going to go get some ice cream. This little place called Franny's. I've heard it's really good. Of course. Oh, I'm feeling tipping my face. So, but yeah, I've heard it's really good. And of course, I'm not too hard to uh, please with ice cream. So. Let's uh let's go ahead and go and here we are. Ice cream. Uh, that was so Hey guys, so sitting here at Franny's and I got the blueberry pomegranate sorbet with extra blueberries. Best fruit ever. That's cold. That's cold, but that's cold. Okay, so we are now leaving Fanny's. And we are going to head to the house, hang out for a little while, because we are then going to go on a ghost tour of Prescott. So, that'll be fun. Watch my sisters jump. All that fun stuff. So, it should be interesting. Uh, fascinating as well. So, be pretty cool. Oh, check this out. There is a wooden eagle here at this store. Looks kind of like it's made of like driftwood or something. Excuse me, something. That's pretty cool. All right, folks. It is time for the ghost adventures. Here we go. Spooky, spooky. This is one of the founding father's homes. She's got two of them over there. This is the oldest log house in Arizona. It's Fort Misery. That should tell you something. And then this is a replica of a schoolhouse, a log schoolhouse. So if you haven't visited there, it's really a neat thing. She was the first female delegate to represent Arizona. On the delegation floor, there's a picture of her and they made her a special dress. Um, and it had copper sound in it. And it Bill. 
clean that they open and it's um, where they have auditorium, people come and talk, give talks. I gave a talk there. And Jack Jones bought the house next door, which has since burned down. And he bought the lot that the Vendome is on and had it built right away because there were so many miners in town, they didn't have a place to stay. So when he built it, it had 31 rooms and 16 bathrooms. So this man, this is Tom Mix. Tom Mix was a silent cowboy actor and he used to make his movies here. And at one time, he was the highest paid actor in Hollywood. But he would make his movies here, and every time he came to town, he would um, stay at the Vendome. So he would rent a room there by the year, so he made sure he had a place to stay when he came in town. So I posted this picture on my Instagram account, and one of my cousins that lives in Colorado sent me a private message and said, I own a Tom Mix hat. So I wrote her and I said, how did you get a Tom Mix hat? And she said, well, I went to an auction and had too much wine to drink and I bought it. So she sent me a picture of her hat that she has and the letter that went with it. And then she's got them in their cabin there, in their home. So I said, wow, that you must be fun to go to with the, at the auction. <laughs> So the famous ghost here is Abby and her cat Noble, and they're in room 16, which is upstairs on the right in the corner. And this is a picture of the room inside. So the story is that Abby was very ill. She had tuberculosis and her husband goes out to get her medicine and doesn't come back. So she gets her cat Noble and puts him in her closet. And she and she locks herself in a her room and they both starve to death. Oh. And back then the hotel, even though it's been Hotel Vendome since forever, um, it's, no one really knows where the name came from, but it was more like a boarding house when he opened it. And I believe that she was one of the ladies that took care of it. And there's a lot of different stories that go on, you know, about her and all this but I had the privilege of helping out the previous managers that worked there so that was kind of cool to work in a haunted hotel and be doing haunted tours and so one night I'm in the office working and, and um, I have a cat at home so I didn't think anything of it and this cat brushed up against my leg and meowed and when I looked down there's nobody there so I just said okay Noble what do you want <laughs> And uh, then this is a picture someone took of me in Abby's room. So I tell people when you take pictures, you wanna have your flash on. You wanna take three pictures. If it's a um, reflection, it'll show up in all three. If it's a ghost, it'll only show up in one. I have a cool tree thinking of it being 300 years old. So all this used to be kind of residential. And then they the police this came in and bought planted. all this lot by and some other buildings and so people were buying up the cutting, homes and moving them to it was over properties. 300 years old it's called the butt cheek tree yeah there she is i wonder why i call her a she she's got to be a she <laughs> courthouses so this was actually not really but sort of kind of the first courthouse and really it was where the legislature met while they were waiting for this courthouse to get built isn't that pretty? I know, it's beautiful. And then there you see people on the lawn. The, on Sundays, the marching band would come in and play, and they'd bring their blankets and hang out there and listen to music. And nowadays, you know, it's kind of the same thing, except mostly it's Tuesday through Saturday when there's no rainstorms. But it started to crumble, so they decided to tear it down. There's a picture of it being torn down. And then they built the one that we have today. So this one is 105 years old. It was built in 1960. Started building it in 1915. 
and Prescott Center for the Arts used to be the Sacred Heart Catholic Church. And Father Catu, the man I was telling you about that was giving the last rites to the two men, uh, this was his church. This is where he had mass. And they just grew. They grew so fast they needed something bigger. So they built a bigger church and they sold it. Okay, so it may be kind of hard to see what those little things flitting around through the air. Those are bats. That's pretty cool. That's stinking awesome. I've never seen bats flying around like that. Oh, it's the hey guys, what's going on? So, uh, we're at home getting ready to go to bed. I figured I'd talk to you about the the ghost uh, tour we went to. So it was called like the Haunted Trolley Ride in Prescott. And it was, it was really interesting. Definitely something that I think that just about anyone who goes to Prescott should do if you're looking for a historical ex uh, experience. Now, I don't believe in ghosts whatsoever. But I, I admit, I really enjoyed it. The lady that put it on, she's very fun, very informative. And so there's a lot of good history stuff, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, they're on the trip. They're, they're on the tour. Plus, I mean, you just get to travel around Prescott, which was really cool. And so, yeah, I highly recommend doing it. Um... For those of you who do believe in ghosts, there there were some I mean, really interesting stories, interesting pictures, videos that she had because on because it was being a trolley, they had some uh, screens up top to show the pictures of what they were talking about in the different areas that they were at. So, I highly recommend it. I think I think it's a great tour a great thing to do in here in Prescott so tomorrow we are going to go up to an hour from here it's called Bear Arizona literally we will be driving through a bear sanctuary I guess is what you'd call it and we will be in the cars I'm guessing they'll be kind of like the safari cars where, they, where it's the cages and that sort of deal. And we'll just drive and we'll see the bears and any other creatures living there. I'm really excited for that because I've never actually, I mean, I've seen bears in zoos and that sort of thing. But I've never had the opportunity to interact with them on any sort of level that's not in a zoo or something like that. I mean, I, well, I guess there was one time I was in... Uh, Colorado, up by Colorado Springs, or, sorry, Fort Collins, at uh, uh, Poudre Canyon, for those of you in Colorado or familiar with the Colorado area, and there were two little cubs climbing the tree in the middle of the campground where the, where the cabins were, and those were, they were really cool, but I suppose that's the only non-zoo experience I've ever had with bears. I'm pretty excited for this. The bears are pretty cool. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, not sure what else we're going to do. Probably not too much because it's an hour drive to and from. So, but it'll be a good time. I am definitely looking forward to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the sack because we are going to leave about 8 a.m. So I got to make sure I sleep fairly well. So. All right, peace out, Girl Scouts. I will catch you all tomorrow in the next vlog.